Hi, I'm Dr. Vonda Wright, and today we're going to be talking about our evolution from traditional arthroscopy to the new nanotechnology. Anytime we introduce something new into our surgical environment, we have to ask ourselves why. Is it just a fancy new device, or can we really impact the care of our patients? When I think about nanotechnology, the first thought is, does it increase patient safety? Will it allow me location flexibility? And how does it affect cost containment? When I introduce the idea of a new surgical approach to my patient, in specific nanotechnology for their arthroscopy, I describe it to them as a procedure where I can fix their knee, take care of their meniscal pain with no incisions, with no narcotics, with no anesthesia, with limited or no need for physical therapy, and a promise that we will have rapid recovery back to life and activity. These are all whys that encourage my patient and myself to push the needle into the new nanotechnology. So I wanted to share with you the critical pivots that I took over only a six week period to transition my OR from standard treatment of knee pathology with arthroscopy into nanoscope technology. It is a slow introduction and yet only took six weeks for both myself and the operating room to feel comfortable. So pivot number one was to introduce the nanoscope into the operating room. The first week I did this, we had both the nanoscope and all of our standard arthroscopy equipment in the room. Anesthesia remained general, and both systems were open on the field. In the second pivot, in the second week of this transition, it was a pivotal week for us because we eliminated all traditional arthroscopy equipment from the room. I had come to the knowledge that I needed to use the nanoscope high flow 30 degree scope to reproduce my surgical procedure. And that was the only equipment open. In the second pivot, anesthesia was still general, but the room setup was only 1000 cc's of saline in a pressure bag. I replaced the traditional nanoscope 60 cc syringes because I found that it moved the view of my scope. But with a 1000 cc bag on a simple tubing, I eliminated that problem. After the very important second pivot, the third pivot moved us in the forward direction. Here, in terms of equipment, I was still only using the nanoscope with the high flow sheath in the 30 degree angle. The pivot in number three that was so critical was that I went from general anesthesia to sedation with local anesthesia. In pivot three, I used 10 cc's of 0.25 Marcane with epi into the subcutaneous tissue and intracapsular. Once that was set and numb, I then introduced 20 cc's of 0.25 Marcane intraarticularly. And then we waited for that to set up. In pivot number three, we again used only 1,000 cc's of normal saline in a pressure bag. Patients tolerated this incredibly. And so I took the next leap to pivot number four, which is currently my standard of care, is to do nanoscope arthroscopy using high flow sheaths and a 30 degree scope in an awake patient with only local anesthesia. For this, I found I wanted faster anesthesia, so I now use 10 cc's of 1% lidocaine with epi in the subcutaneous and intracapsular space, simply because it sets up faster. Then I put 20 cc's of 0.25 marcaine intraarticularly. Again, we are only using normal saline in a pressure bag. With this pivotal fourth pivot, my patients sometimes want to watch the procedure and are certainly recovering immediately. So how is this done? I wanted to go over with you the steps for implementing Pivot 4 in the OR. You may use your usual prep and drape. Once that is complete, administer the local anesthesia sub-Q, intracapsular, and then finally intraarticular. And then while your scrub tech is setting up the equipment, the local anesthesia will set up. My approach to making the points of entry, which is what we call the nanotechnology entry into the joint, 
is to mark the tibial tuberosity. That helps me visualize where I am in the knee and the inferior pole of the patella. I then put a mark where the lateral point of entry will be very similarly to a standard portal. Through that, I use the sharp tip, high flow straight nanotrocar into the anterior lateral position and I simply gently pop it through the capsule and I leave it there anteriorly in the notch. I then exchange the sharp trocar for the blunt plastic tip and either sweep across the notch or push it up into the suprapatellar space, which is my usual operation. I then exchange the straight sheath for the curved high flow sheath over a simple wire. At this point in the suprapatellar pouch, I do my regular examination of the pouch, the medial gutter, and finally sweeping down into the medial compartment. It's there under direct visualization that I again establish my medial point of entry, just as I would in traditional arthroscopy, using first the straight, sharp nanotrocar. With both sheaths in place or removing the medial sheath and introducing biters, shavers, ablator devices, I then treat the meniscus. I repeat this procedure for treatment and evaluation in the notch and then in the lateral compartment by putting the knee in a figure four. When I am completely done with this procedure, which takes me anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, I express the fluid and then I cover the points of entry with steri strips and a dressing. This is a simple overview of how I set up my tray. This is it. We don't need any big back table, only this simple array. Finally, I wanted to present to you a case that I did recently of a 32-year-old bartender and recreational power lifter with an acute onset of sharp, stabbing posterior medial pain. He came to my office literally unable to bear weight because of this sharp pain, and we did an MRI and confirmed that he had not only a horizontal cleavage tear, but a piece that had flipped underneath the remaining meniscus. After talking him through the nanoscope technology and the reasons I use it, including why I would like for him to be awake during the procedure, we proceeded with a nanoscope awake debridement of the medial meniscus and chondroplasty of his medial femoral condyle via two points of entry under local anesthesia. In this image, you see the two points of entry with my marking over the tibial tuberosity and mark over the inferior pole of the patella. They're barely visible to the patient. In this series of pictures, you see my initial view with his damage to his medial femoral condyle and a hint in the back of his meniscus tear. The second photograph shows you his horizontal cleavage tear and the third, the flipped piece of meniscus, which I had unflipped with a probe. And finally, the picture shows you of the debridement I did with simple biters and shavers. This patient truly was awake and did not feel this procedure. He came back to my office two days after surgery with full range of motion, no effusion, and a completely normal gait. And a couple days later, sent me these pictures of him back in his powerlifting gym, having experienced a rapid recovery to recreation and work. Introducing nanotechnology into your practice and operating room or even your office procedure room is an exciting advance in arthroscopy. It takes careful planning, pivotal translations for not only your skill but in the operating room and education of your patient on how they will remain safe and have rapid recovery. I hope this has helped you as you transition to this new technology.